is what they look like. Leon Haslam on 25. First race winner ahead of teammate Luke Mossy. Christian Iden beat his way past Peter Hickman to grab 16 points for third. Hickey in fourth ahead of James Ellison on 11 points. Glenn Irwin on 10. Josh Brooks got nine points after sh shedding a couple of uh, places in the closing couple of laps. Michael Laverty in eighth. Jake Dixon ninth. Jason O'Halloran in tenth. 11th for Dan Daniel Linford. I've never seen him as a Daniel before. Thomas uh, George Bridewell in 12th place. Then Davide Giuliano in 13th place ahead of Jakob Smirt and Sean Winfield. And uh, this is the grid on uh, top of uh, the third place man. Christian Iden, we've got Josh Brooks, Leon Haslam, Michael Laverty on the front row. Remember, this is lap times, not positions. Luke Mossy, James Ellison and Peter Hickman on the second row. I find it quite disturbing the way these heads rise in front of me. Christian Iden, Glenn Irwin and Sylvain Gintoli on row three. And row four is Davide Giuliano, Jake Dixon, very impressive in race one, and Taylor McKenzie. Taylor McKenzie therefore proving that he had the pace even though he slipped off as he'd reached 11th place in that first race. Number 50, Sylvain Gintoli. He fell to his frustration and annoyance, the former world superbike champion. He's got a lot of work to do, uh, as has... Well, we know that Leon Haslam is going to be on the pace. Uh, he's starting second to Josh Brooks. The man in yellow then, Josh Brooks, uh, number 25, is on the front row of the grid and ready to go. This is the second race of the MC Insurance British Superbike Championship 2017. Haslam got a great start. Haslam got a great start, side by side, grabs a wheelie on the way to Redgate and still almost drops it down in time to cut inside Josh Brooks, but not quite. Luke Mossy in third place. Did so you see the, the way Haslam did the big wheelie and then looked across at Josh Brooks really steadily not a snatch look it was a proper glance at him as if to say have I got the room or yeah, have just I not exactly that's exactly what he was doing fortunately he decided he hadn't so they both stayed upright uh, so that's a brilliant start then for those two I think uh, one of the, the McCams Yamahas have got off strongly as well and Michael Laverty, yeah, Laverty yeah. of course who was there on the second row of the grid uh, I think he's on the front row of the grid who's taken advantage of that starting place. Yeah, and 77 is teammate James Ellison right behind him, right in his wheel tracks. Well, that's that, the whole of the field then going uh, into Coppice Corner with Josh Brooks at the head of the pack as they pour down the hill through the my Oh, look at this, Michael Laverty, as soon as they get onto the Dunlop straight there, he outbreaks Luke Mossy. Oh, Mossy has a bit of a moment, clips the curb coming out of the fog. Yes, has cost himself just a vital moment or two. Yeah, and one of the things that happened with just about every Yamaha in the field was they seemed to use a lot of the rear tyre. All the Yamaha mountain riders complaining about lack of grip towards the end of the race so we'll see and josh brooks one of those yamaha men leading the way in fact we've now got uh, three yamahas in the top five as they come through goddard's two kawasaki's three yamahas in the top five as they come howling down the wheat croft straight here comes ellison just cuts his way neatly inside the waving inside leg of luke mossy now this is a big test for luke mossy i feel that He's got to show us that he's got to, he can reproduce that form in the second race yeah. and sustain it throughout. Yeah, the thing is with the first race, he was kind of brutally aggressive and he's having a little bit of a go now there he underneath yeah. James Ellison into the old airfield. And he actually got away with his teammate that dragged him along, so we'll see if he can make ground from not such a good first lap, actually. That's a strong move there because was it... Uh, is that Christian? That's Hidden, yeah, that's Hidden Hidden on the 24 tackle bike. Took advantage of that moment when Ellison had got forced wide by Luke Mossy and he too went through and now he's into fifth place. Ellison sixth, Hickman, Irwin, Gintoli and Taron Mc and Taylor McKenzie has made it through to tenth place ahead of John Hopkins and Dan Linfoot. Could that be Daniel? Daniel Linfoot, number four. Oh, Ellison back up inside Christian Itton. He's not taking that lying down, so that's uh, BMW being uh, subdued for a moment by Yamaha until they drop down the hill here. Uh, right behind him, you can see Peter Hickman, who we, uh, he waged a battle with throughout the first race, uh, did Christian Itton. And behind him, number two, showing that the, he's really getting to grips with the cowards. They Ducati there is Glenn Irwin. Behind him, former World Superbike champ, Silva Gattoli. 
So third lap out of 20 as they enter that. Brooks fastest lap, 130-0, but 129.85 for second man Leon Haslam. And all the way down the, through the pack, you can see uh, chopping and changing as guys make moves, particularly into Redgate, those spots around this beautiful flowing circuit where passes could be made. Yeah, actually, top three, Brooks, Aslam and Laverty, all with almost the same lap time. 30 flat, a 29.8 and a 29.9. So Brooks, Haslam, Laverty, Mossy, Ellison, Iden, Hickman, Irwin and Guidoli all holding fort. Mackenzie drops a couple of places. John Hopkins in the 10th, Dan Linfoot into 11. Perhaps they're beginning to sort out uh, the, the electronics of that so far wayward Honda, the new Honda. Oh, great, as they come surging out. James, when you're, when you're, when you're riding without the, the electronic... Oh, and here yep. comes Michael Laverty. Thought he could get inside Leon Haslam. When you're powering out of a corner like Coppice, yep. can you actually nail it? Or are you having to feel your way through the power band? No, when you... Uh, Coppice is a weird one because it's double apex. You're going at about 80 miles an hour, then it sort of unwinds as you go around. So you're going up the gearbox. And at no point when the bike's at maximum lead with a bike with 210 horsepower can you whack the throttle up because these have no rider aids. That would just spin the rear tire up and you would be going flying. There's no question about that. Uh, and, uh, there's, there's a problem, problem for Michael Laverty. He did. Oh, right. So Laverty, he goes wide. He has got a problem, has he? Gear has selection he issue, maybe. Getting into a false neutral, going down there to Goddard's, maybe. No, he's got something wrong. Ah, that's oh, Billy McConnell. Billy McConnell he crashed out of Goddard in the first race, and Skippy's done it again. Uh, he'd be furious with himself at that, having had such a good winter, uh, not only in Adelaide, but down at uh, Anna Bay uh, in Queensland with his mate Brock Park. He had a good couple of weeks there, uh, did the Troy Bayliss Classic and really enjoyed themselves. And he's come back on top of the world and he's pitched himself off in both races. Josh Brooks leads the way. Second place, Haslam. They're opening up a slight gap on the third place, Ellison, who's had a bit to contend with with Mossy. Hidden in fifth, Hickman in sixth. Now, the sun's been out a little bit, and the track temperature, I think, is going to be slightly higher than race one, because the wind's dropped a little bit as well. So that might just favour the people who are sticking with the softer SC0 rear tyre. That works better when it's warmer, strange. It doesn't sound like it's, it's counterintuitive, is that? But it is better when it's warmer. So that may be favouring Ellison and not Haslam. The rear end of Hopkins' motor repeater Ducati really stepping out, and Laverty yeah, definitely yeah, that, is in trouble with yeah. the McCann's Yamaha. And that very disappointing for the uh, experienced Ulsterman after that good qualifying position, starting from the front row of the grid. Meanwhile, his teammate James Ellison pressing on in third place. As they drop down now to Red Gates, into the sparkling sunshine goes the yellow. The yellow Yamaha, there is the blue and white of Philip Neal's Tyco BMW team. Christian Hidden on board, uh, his teammate Giuliano down in 12th place as he gets to... Well, do you know, I can't remember Davide Giuliano racing a four-cylinder motorcycle. It's a big change for him, James. He spent I... almost uh, his adult career on Ducati. Did he not ride in stock thou on a, on a four-cylinder? Before he won it on a Ducati? Yeah, he might, I, he might I have done. Know. I actually don't know that, and that, that's... Uh... Yeah, Ellis Laverty's back has expired now because that's him walking back. So wherever it was, is terminal. So me. Meanwhile, as we uh, as we check back at the front, we're on the fifth lap of 20, number 25 in the lead, Josh Brooks, enjoying himself immensely and enjoying the cut and thrust of being back in BSB. And uh, these three just edging a little bit clear now of the fourth place man, Luke Mossy, Eden, Hickman, Irwin, Gintley, all holding station. Hopkins up to ninth, Linfoot through the top ten. Brooks on the softer option front and rear, so he's on an SC1 front, an SC0 rear. And has them quite the opposite, the harder option on the front and at the back. But he's always had the, he's certainly always had the ability to make those harder tyres work for him, hasn't he, hasn't he Leon Haslam? Yeah, I, I think it, it was... Hang on, what's happening? That's uh, that's Mackenzie with Giuliano up the inside. Oh, and that's a sit-up job, is that? <laughs> yes. Have that. So, Davide Giuliano moving through then into 11th place. You remember that uh, Haslam really suffered with not being able to run the softer of the option tyres last year when uh, Shane Byrne particularly could True. run it. Yes. And it definitely cost him yeah. time. 
And now he's, he's, he's hanging right in there with the 2015 champion, Josh Brooks. Brooks, of course, former uh, Australian Superbike champion, former bronze medalist in the World Super Sport Championship. Uh, very much enjoying being back uh, with his beautiful lady here in the Anvil Higher Tag Yamaha team now for 2017. Yeah, this is already a faster race, the dipping below the lap times that Josh Brooks uh, did in the first race. In fact, Josh is... Uh, let's have a look, 29, oh, at least in fastest man, 21, 29, one, sorry. And that's a good sort of four tenths of a second faster than anybody managed in race one. That's considerably quicker. So these five, well, Christian Hinton said it was a fairly steady, steady race, race that yeah. actually benefited him in race one, didn't he? Yeah. So he's, think, he's, he's not benefiting from this, this I, is a scalding case. I think conditions are just that slightly better, I think just a little bit less wind, track temperature a little bit warmer. And uh, being pushed past our window right now is the silent number seven McCams Yamaha uh, Michael Laverty. As Josh Brooks and Ooh, Haslam awfully late into Redgate, he's uh, perhaps feeling the pressure a little bit from uh, James Ellison. Uh, they're, they're lapping in the mid 129s at the moment, so the pace really upped from race one. Yeah, it is. And the guys, who, these are the lads who are running 129s. So Mossy is as well, so to uh, uh, Christian Inns on a 130-0, and then the rest of them just over the top of the 130s. Uh, to be fair to Luke Mossy in fourth, he's going exactly the same speed as he did in race one. It's just these guys going that yes, just a fraction yes. quicker. There's Mossy in fourth. A little bit of breathing space, not too much though. No, he's got it, it will look persistent and he, behind him. Yeah, and he is, and it is persistent, never gives up. So as they come howling out of uh, onto the done up straight again. Sometimes in, uh, in the stock classes you'll see, certainly stock six, they're not allowed quick shift to show, you'll see the right hand uh, flicking away at the throttle as they close it, hit the gear lever, then open it again. These have quick shifters, so you can actually leave the throttle wide open, hit the gear lever, that cuts the ignition out fraction for a fraction of a second, a millisecond, and that releases the pressure on the gear box, the drive pressure, and that lets the gear go in. You know, what, it, what, it, what, we, can't, what we can't divulge on screen is the distance between the Melbourne Hairpin and, Hairpin and Goddard's uphill and over the crest of the hill and the pace at which they ascend it. Oh, Haslam looked over his left way. shoulder. <laughs> that was the wrong way to glance, Leon. Has he got problems? Because Haslam looks as if he wasn't confident going into there. Oh, McKenzie's gone down. Yeah. McKenzie, who fell in the first race, will doubly frustrate himself by falling in the second one. Taylor McKenzie, very disappointed with this. Uh, well, this is Goddard's. Uh, that's the book exactly yes. on the change of time. Do you see that? Yeah. So Mackenzie goes down, having seen his kid brother win the Super Sport race as we check back with the battle between, for, well, at the moment, for second place between uh, James Ellison and Leon Haslam. And it, it's quite unusual for Leon Haslam to be looking back, you know. And it, I can't, you can't see an obvious problem with a bike, but... What, what tyres James, is James Ellison running? Is Ellison he, is, he... is the softer option, SC1 front, SC0 rear. Um, right. So basically, it's the softer options on the front and the back. So I, I just wonder if that will work in their favour early on. We're on the eighth lap of 20. Driving hard out of the Fogarty S's, James Ellison. Well, he's got Brooks in his sights, but a little uh, he's got to deal with Haslam. You look at this, though, the last three laps for Brooks have been quicker than the fastest lap from race one. These are consistently really good laps from Brooks. Yeah, 129.46 uh, on his last lap was his best lap. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, He's, he has been running those 129 and a halves, yes. Well, that's that's it, yeah. And it's beginning to work. He's beginning to extract a lead. Mossy crosses the line. Eden is only uh, is about four tenths behind him. Hickman, Irwin, Gwintley, Hopkins, Linfoot in tenth, Giuliano in eleventh. This Luke Mossy. And that's Eden. He's actually hitting Christian Eden 24 there on the tackle back. He's, he's closing him down somewhat. He's creeping in, isn't he? Eden is managing to just ever so slightly close the gap. So, uh, an interesting battle in prospect there uh, to, between, um, well, the two guys that we regard as young guns, even though Christian Eden is actually um, a grown up, really, even though he, he has a Latin inscription on the back of his leathers that says uh, eternal youth. He, said he regards himself as a bit of a Peter Pan character. Yeah, the, the thing is, he never he never got into road racing until he was, what, 22 or 23 years old? Spent a lot of his time older than that. Yeah, and I think, I think he started at 22 years old when he first had a 600, and he was doing it at the same time as his Supermoto. 
So really, that's a, that's a late entry into, into this kind of racing. I mean, we're more used to seeing kids starting racing at sort of eight and nine and ten on mini motors and then progressing yeah, he through. Was 25, 25 when he when broke into road racing. For his first road race? Uh, when, when, he, when he really came to our notice doing some British sort of sport Yeah, races. yeah, no, he started at 22, I know he did that. I mean, I'm probably his career, his dad used to buy fuel off me, so I know what he's doing. But, but that is a, 22 or 23 is really late into this job when you consider that most kids now are into a six, seven, eight, nine. So across the line, there goes Luke Mossy. He's running in fourth place. He's uh, and 129.7, hidden 129.7. Uh, I beg your pardon, looking at the wrong column. 130 <laughs> against 130.1. So uh, he's holding. Oh, oh Jake that's Dixon. Dixon. That's Jake Dixon. And he had such a good run in the first he race. Did. Dixon really impressed me in the first race. So he's uh, fallen from the RAF. This has gone out again. He's oh, no. the same crash. That bike's got to end up in exactly the same place. Look, you see the yeah. scrape mark's gone exactly the same way as uh, Taylor McKenzie. Very frustrating. It is, yeah. That, it, 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 they say sometimes the punishment doesn't fit the crime. Yeah, and you know, um, when you, 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 you kind of maximum lean just getting off the front brake, you hit that bump, it goes down, you, there's nothing you can do about it. It's so, it goes so quick, you, there's no chance of saving it. Glenn Irwin challenging Peter Hickman now as they go uh, on two very different motorcycles. The screaming 1,000cc four-cylinder against the big, booming twin-cylinder 1,200. And, uh, oh, Irwin looks determined on here. That's a bit like his brother Andy. He's just going to carve his way through, come what may. So he moves through into sixth place. And, uh, incidentally, Haslam has broken through and clear of Ellison while we've been away. And he's now uh, cleanly through into second place. Yeah, and these guys have con continue to get quicker and quicker. Last lap of Brooks and Haslam, both 29 twos. And that's about, what, seven tenths quicker than Ellison in third. Josh Brooks crosses the line, 1.2 second advantage over Leon Haslam. And uh, goes into his 11th lap of 20, so precisely half distance, 10 laps complete of 20. Brooks leads the way. Haslam's going quicker though, and, and if anything, Haslam's tyres are gonna come into their own in, in the later laps, I think. It's real nip and tuck between both those two guys and the fourth and fifth place Mossy and Eden. Uh, Hickman will soon have Vintley and Hopkins for company because they're looking they're looking strong and we're a good deal quicker than Peter on the last lap. This is Luke Mossy swinging his way through McLean's ahead of Christian Eden. Eden. There yeah. is the battle going on as we watch Peter Hickman. So Van Gentoli on the Bennett Suzuki, Hopkins on the Motor Rapido Ducati, Linfoot still in 10th place, Giuliano in 11th. Actually, Giuliano was a, about a, a, almost a second quicker than Linfoot on the last lap. So uh, there's all sorts of mini battles beginning to develop through the pack. Uh, Jakob Smertz and Bradley Ray. Bradley Ray, oh, they've given him a coloured fairing. So Bradley Ray, number 28, finally gets some colour in his bearing and uh, is chasing down Kuba Smirts. Yeah, and Bradley looks like he's going to score a point or two there, down in 15th chasing Smirts. But I've got to say, Bradley just needs to finish. Experience is what he needs. This is his first ever competitive ride on a superbike. And this is impressive from him. Number 34, Davide Giuliano, seventh in the World Superbikes, despite missing uh, three, the last three rounds last season, ahead of number four, Dan Linfoot. This is the battle then for 10th place. Giuliano's taken it from Linfoot and nudged the Honda back. Yeah, a Rossum finisher uh, last year in World Superbike. So, yeah, he's no more taking a little bit of time to get oh, used mate, to the fourth cylinder. Rossum finisher, that, that lad has come so close to winning a World Superbike yeah. race every year since 2012. He's had a string of... He, he's had second places every single season since without managing to snatch that win, and he's led a lot of them. It's fair to say he's no stranger to the accident and emergency <laughs> department of most European hospitals, right? <laughs> it's not, is it? <laughs> he did finish top six in the world in 2013. Yes, he did. He's fast. And, uh, and Ducati certainly kept faith with him after after he'd won them that European Superstock Championship in 2011. Yeah, and just as we thought, we're going to look at lap times, fastest lap of the race now, and sneaking down towards a 29-0. That's Haslam, three tenths quicker than uh, Josh Brooks last time round. And he's been more than three tenths quicker on this lap because he's really closed the gap on the race leader. So Brooks from Bringelli on the uh, outskirts, the suburbs of Sydney leads the way but Leon Haslam now as we enter the 13th lap of 20 
is beginning to close down on the Anvil Higher Tag Yamaha. But having said that, given where Anvil Higher Tag Yamaha were running last season, this is a terrific, uh, refreshing kind of um, recovery for them to find themselves running at the front or even near the front. Good has, has, good, sorry. Good run from Brooks is. Really steady, good. Can a mature run? And I'm sure he's going to want to win it, but certainly he's not going to do anything silly, I don't think. If he needs to finish second, if he has to do, he will do. He's finished. He was six tenths of a tenth of a second slower on that last lap as Haslam began to close the gap between behind these guys uh, by about 3.9 seconds, four seconds, shall we say, James Ellison. And then it's Luke Mossy versus uh, Christian Hidden. Uh, uh, looks as if Luke's getting the better of that one. And then Irwin pulling away from Hickman who is in front of Guintoli, Hopkins and Giuliano. Yeah, and the Anvil higher tag Yamaha squad will have the lap board out and Josh Brooks will know exactly what the situation is behind him. And he'll know he, he, he's got, I hate to say at this stage, but a fairly safe second here. Yeah, yes. Wonderful noise that Yamaha makes on the over when he yeah, it sounds, down the hill. It sounds more of a V-twin than the V-twin does, but it isn't. It's a force wind. It's just the way the crank set up and the way the firing order is that makes it sound like a like a, a, a booming twin. Like, why, James? What what creates that to, uh, make, it, to make it sound? It's that called way? cross plane. It's just the way it fires. It, it, because it produces power in a certain way, because the power pulses of the firing cylinders, it makes it a big load of torque in the middle of the rev range. The problem with it is it's not. A, you can't dynamically balance each cylinder against the other so it has to run a balancer shaft which takes a little bit of power to, to, to run so there's, there's pros and cons mechanically well it's, it's certainly a, a welcomingly different noise amongst the howling four strokes and, the, and the, the, the really huge boom of the Ducati talking of which we've got two Ducatis running top 10 Irwin in sixth place Hopkins who was unlucky to go out of uh, race one. well of course Hopkins riding with a couple of broken bones in his foot after flicking himself off at Goddard this morning uh, is running in ninth place Giuliano in 10th O'Halloran's got the better of Linfoot in the Honda squabble he's now into 11th place Bridewell is in 13th ahead of Smurfs Bradley Ray still in the points uh, and we watch Haslam just kind of show a front wheel a little yeah. bit there to just let the Australian know that he's uh, he's loitering with intent. And you get the impression that Haslam has got this one kind of covered, and we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. These guys like Bradley Ray's lapping in 131.0, which is only about 1.2 seconds slower than these guys. That's quite impressive. I oh, know he's been really impressive as Bradley. Ray. So that, that's first to 15. You, know, you almost it? don't need the pressure that people are putting on him. You know, he, he needs to just have half a season learning the bike, learning the ropes, learning the people he's riding with yeah. before we even start saying it's impressive and he's going to make a good superbike rider, etc. But I've been worse than anybody for saying it. Actually. I think he's capable of accepting it. Ellison is now in the battle for second place. is getting interesting. Ellison down to 30.6. So he's dropped the second astern of the two race leaders. Uh, that's that's going to get a really intriguing battle there. Where we've got this battle for the first place and a really developing three-way scrap for third. And you know, as we mentioned earlier, being a, a, a pest who won't give up, that, that uh, Christian Idle will be thinking, I can get this third place again. On the 15th lap of 20 now, so almost at three-quarter race distance. And Josh Brooks uh, returning to BSB with the same kind of uh, animal instinct and uh, hunger that he'd exhibited throughout his previous years in the championship. Yeah, and he rode his old BSB winning back on 15 uh, this year in the Superbike. Uh, as Aslam just slides up there. Uh, just, that was coming. Yes. It was coming. Perfect. So uh, Leon Haslam just slips through then, does the job nice and clean, and then hangs out a leg to protect the inside line. And we're as he to... drops down the hill. Here's the battle going on now. Peter Hickman getting the better of number 77. James Ellison on the back of Yamaha. So suddenly we've closed that's... right up here, and that's Hickman through to third. No, that's Mossy. Eh? That's still oh, Mossy. sorry, Mossy that's... through to third. Sorry. <laughs> that's still Mossy in third, and that's James <laughs> Ellison on the back of 77 Yamaha there. And, and Eden uh, snapping at the heels. So this is uh, the, the man who finished second in race one then, Luke Mossy, looking to get a really terrific start with two good results back to back, but he uh, just leaves a bit too much room into Redgate, and it's no good trailing that long leg there, Luke, because Ellison has fought back and forth through. Yeah, and this is uh, Leon Alton putting a little bit of time into Josh Brooks in second, and I expected that, I think, 
Let's have a look into all their pin. Moss's favourite passing position there. Kept off the curb that time. We did say that, that it would be, you know, Mossy stringing together two strong races in the one this, afternoon would be a big one. this is one. A this is good. He's, he's racing with people. It looks like there's a, a, a fair opportunity of a, of a podium position. And remember, these three are scrapping for the last step on the podium. Yeah. Always nice to... It, it, I'm yeah. pretty sure you remember. Always nice to actually get on the box, James, and yeah, be up is, there to, uh, to soak up the adulation, if that's the right word. Dropping into that Fogarty S as then, uh, James. And so we've got Yamaha versus Kawasaki versus BMW. I've got to say it again, how good are the, are the regulations for BSB? All the, all the manufacturers in with a shout. Yeah, and uh, speaking... Oh, a mistake there by oh, Ellison. Yeah. And uh, you don't expect Christian Hidden to hang about. He just nudges his way through into fourth place. Yeah, and that, you don't give Christian Hidden an opportunity like that. Used to banging bearings, he spent all his formative years on uh, Supermoto, and that's a rough sport when you watch it. Ellison just uh, takes his half the ball a little bit, leaves a little bit of room. He's concentrating more on what Luke Moss has just done, and uh, he didn't take advantage. So the Leicestershire based covering there, but base just up the road, really. This is almost his local track now. James Ellison gets nudged back to fifth place. Uh, originally, of course, from Kendall up in Cumbria, drops downhill. But uh, ahead of him now, the battle for third place looks between those two guys. And I was going to say a couple of laps ago, Peter Hickman's losing out to Sylvain Guintoli. And there is Sylvain, number 50 now, bringing the Bennett Suzuki into the picture. Very, very fast man on track at the moment is Glenn Irwin. He's going really quick, and he's just behind that battle that involves Mossy, Eden and Ellison. He's not far behind him now. He, you're right, he did a 130.1 on the last lap, which was... Uh, Over a second quicker than the three brunt. Yes. So uh, he, he's going to he's gonna uh, bother James Ellison's fifth place in a few moments. There he's he on the 17th lap of 20, and the red Ducati is closing the gap on the guys who are uh, striking out for third place. Meanwhile, Quintilli tries to find a way past Peter Hickman, and oh, what's going on back here? We've got another change, and this is O'Halloran making a pass on Davide Giuliano. Jason O'Halloran, the Australian from Wollongong. Davide Giuliano, the big Roman, uh, making his debut this weekend in British Superbike. Oh, Davide Giuliano gets yes. through. He pressed his way through there and had the pace to yes, gallop up the hill. That nice the way he just slid out of Melbourne yeah. there, though. This, of course, a, a course that he knows well from his, his racing days on the European and World Circuits. First came here back in 2006 when he was in the uh, racing the European Superstock 600s. Finished third overall that year in the championship. Here's Silvan Gintoli, uh, the Bennett Suzuki. That tidy style of Silvan Gintoli is on board. There's Erwin. 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 Oh. That's Erwin Tekin, yeah. I believe, fifth. Ellison. He's got Ellison for fifth place. Yep. And uh, I don't think he may be finished yet. If he's got the time, he's on the 18th lap of 20. Two more laps to go. And uh, Christian Hidden might just have to... He's going to get off the Ducati. He, yeah, he's not going to get much of a go at him, but he's going to get one or two, I think. Wow, these guys are going... Well, you know what? Uh, Christian Hidden and Glenn Irwin will... Oh, and Hidden's going to make a move now on Luke Mossy. So he could get Mossy between himself and the threat of Glenn Irwin, which would be quite handy if he wants to get into the podium place. Glenn Irwin just stuck his fastest lap of the race in at 29. He's just sneaked into the 29s. What tie is he on, then? Let me consult my list. <laughs> Do you want to talk amongst yourselves a little bit? Well, <laughs> <laughs> and listen to the bellow of that 1200cc twin cylinder Ducati up the hill there. Uh, threatening. Oh, and Christian Hidden runs a bit wide on the entrance to Goddard. Here comes Irwin, and he's shot with the softer option on the front and the rear. Lasted well. So the 19th lap of 20, the penultimate lap, Glenn Irwin makes a move on Luke Mossy. Mossy doesn't seem able to retaliate, he sits up, moves aside. Uh, fourth place now for Glenn Irwin. Irwin, I tell you what, there's, there's every, ounce as, every, every ounce of him is quite as mad as Andy Irwin is <laughs> yet, brother. He'll be wanting a rostrum finish to take back to Paul Byrne after they lost Shane Byrne earlier today. And he has got it within it's, his sights. He's got Christian Hidden, and equally determined Christian Hidden to deal with. He's well, 
he, he isn't going to get much of a go at Christian because we've got a lap and about a lap and a half left now. But as you say, his pace has been so picking up. His last lap, 129.8 Eight. against quicker Hinton's quicker. 130.3. He's going to get to him. Yeah, so it's a half second quicker on the last lap. Oh, this is getting uh, very excruciatingly entertaining here. Who's going to come out on top? Luke Bossy looks to be headed for fifth place, which is a... A, a, so, a, a sound backup to his first race, second place. Oh, massive moment. Uh, that was Christian in getting the power down so early and reliving his supermoto days for a moment. Yeah, he actually opened the throttle around the curve. That's what did it. Well, not, not advisable then. No, not, no, not with as much power as these guys have. So the 32-year-old from uh, Derbyshire, just to say, holding on in front of Glenn Irwin from uh, one of the brothers, the three racing brothers of Carrick Fergus. Is it, uh, we know that we know that Irwin's going into red gear. Oh, he is, and he's going to take that line. He's going to take that line away from it, clean as you like. It tries to regroup and force his way. They Irwin both, style they underneath, both want it. and they go down Hollywood. <laughs> And that's uh, perilously close as they howl downhill. Now then, what is Christian going to do down here? Because he knows that the Ducati will come underneath him into the old hairpin, and it does. Now he's got to get the pace of the BMW back inside the wheelie of Ducati as they go through Starkies. He can't quite do it. Up the hill to McLean's, through the Schwartz into McLean's. And uh, the Mossy is not giving up. Mossy is now back on the tail of the blue and white BMW. On the final lap of British Superbikes Race 2 here at Donington Park on a perfect afternoon and a great ride by Glenn Irwin. He's come from a long way back on the B-Wiser Ducati and this will be real cause for celebration in Paul Burt Motorsport if he could create a third place finish. The man who finished third in the last, the first race, right behind him, Christian Iden. The man who finished second in the first race, number 12 on the green Kawasaki. Luke Mossy. The three of them charge over the hilltop, and that was possibly the last opportunity. And now that's one more. a big risk take up the hill. How quick are the four cylinder bikes coming up the hill? And as we see, Leon Haslam do the double ahead of a returning Josh Brooks in second place. And Glenn Irwin is indeed going to ransack third place from under the nose, the noses of Christian Iden and Luke Mossy. Great ride by Glenn Irwin. He looks delighted, and uh, the body language quite the opposite for Christian Iden. Paul Bird looks chuffed, Jack Valentine and Ollie Haslam look well pleased. But for Paul Bird, he's kept faith for the young Irish when he pitched into British Superbikes last season, and it's beginning to pay off. And to be fair, Paul Bird is not bad at spotting talent. He's done it before, he, he, he stayed with Keith Farmer a little bit, and Keith has a, a lot of talent, it just didn't work out, but certainly uh, Glenn Irwin, yeah, good show that was. And not easy, he wasn't gifted that. Leon Haslam then takes the win, his, uh, the second win of the day. Second place goes to Josh Brooks, so Brooks is right back in the reckoning here in his return to British Superbikes on his first day back. Glenn Irwin's third place, uh, a terrific tonic for B. Weiser to cut it. And for Tycho BMW, third and fourth places not to be sniffed at for Christian Hidden. Leon Haslam congratulates Glenn Irwin, or vice versa. James Ellison finished in sixth place. Quintal, he got seventh place from Hickman, who he was threatening in the later stages. Giuliano in ninth place, O'Halloran in tenth. Tommy Bridewell fought his way through to 11th place at the WD40 Kawasaki split the two Hondas. Hopkins was pushed back to 13th. Uh, Bradley Ray got the better of Kuba Smirts and took the Bennett Suzuki to 14th place, his first finish and his first points in British Superbikes. The, the bumper crowd here at Donington Park enjoying the late afternoon sunshine. Let's check out the, uh, the official results then here. Uh, beneath this uh, beautiful blue English sky. Leon Haslam eventually by 2.7 seconds from Josh Brooks. Glenn Irwin, a forceful third for B. Weiser Ducati ahead of Tyco BMW's Christian Iden and JG Speedfit Kawasaki's Luke Mossy. James Ellison's Macam's Yamaha in sixth place ahead of Sylvain Guintoli and Peter Hickman with Davide Giuliano's second Tyco BMW in ninth. Jason O'Halloran, the leading Honda in tenth place. 11th place for Tommy Bridewell. Just capturing Dan Linford on the final lap. 
John Hopkins in 13th place on the Motor Rapidos Ducati, ahead of Bill Base Suzuki and rookie Bradley Ray. Jakob Smertz finishes 15th, ahead of James Westmoreland, Michael Dunlop, Sean Winfield, and non finishers Jake Dixon and Taylor McKenzie, who, along with uh, Billy McConnell and others, slipped off. Which means that uh, a nice round 50 points for Leon Haslam and the JG Speedfit team. Second place to his teammate in the championship, Luke Mossy. Uh, third place shared between Christian Inn and Josh Brooks on 29. Three ahead of Glenn Irwin on 26. Uh, James Ellis and Peter Hickman together on 21 points are in 6th and 7th. Ahead of Jason O'Halloran in 12. Uh, Giuliano on 10 points. Quintilly, who fell in race 1, is on 9. 11th for Dan Linfoot for Honda Racing. 12th, Tommy Bridewell, Team WD40 Kawasaki. Uh, eight points for Michael Laverty, uh, unlucky to go out of race two with a mechanical problem.